In this video, I'll make a workbench and it's for my grinding room that I built a while back. The reason for building the room was to keep the main metal workshop fairly free of grinding dust and to keep my machines clean. The workbench will go along this wall and there's a reason why the window was placed where it is and that's to be able to bring full lengths of steel in and cut them to length on the workbench. I've made plans so I'll get started. I've set up outside in the rain and this is another reason for the workbench and the grinding room so I don't have to work like this. I'll cut all the pieces for the frame to length and for that I'm using 40mm square steel tube. I can certainly manage working like this but having a work table either side of the saw at the same height will be a big improvement and make the tool more enjoyable to use. I'm using this piece of old railroad track as a stop and again even though this works the finished workbench will have a much more convenient method. That's all the pieces cut, next I need to prepare the ends for welding as well as removing the primer. Some of you may have seen these fittings before that I made for my welding table and they make it super easy to weld up an accurate corner and I've also finally gotten around to making plans for the welding table which are available now. It really is a fantastic welding table and workbench so if you're interested in building something like this then check out my plans. And for the release of this project I've put together five of my top plans for 57% off. Simply click the link in the description to access this bundle which includes the plans to this project, the cut off saw workbench as well as my newly created welding table plans. There's also my mini workbench plans, solid workbench plans and my plywood desk plans. If you're looking for some projects to put your hand to over the holidays and you're keen to build some of my most popular projects simply click the link in the description below to access the five pound bundle and as always thanks for your support I'm making the two top sections that go either side of the saw first and then I'll make the base of the frame and then I'll join them all together with the legs The base needs a couple of cross rails and I'm using the top sections to help line those up. Next I'll take the sections into the grinding room and clean up the welds on the faces ready for the legs to be welded on. To help weld the legs on I made this simple jig out of plywood.
I took the height of the saw plus the thickness of a piece of three millimeter steel plate which the saw will be mounted to and that will become clearer later in the video. I used the measurement to position how far the rails come down from the top. Next I'll add shelf rails across the inside of the frame, one at the front and one at the back. These will be to hold a shelf that runs the full length of the workbench. I put that first rail on the wrong way around and didn't line up where I prepared it for the legs but MIG welding is quite forgiving when welding through paint even though it's always a good idea to prepare your welds first. Now I'll cap the ends of the exposed tubes with these small pieces of steel that I prepared off camera. It's not really necessary but it does finish it off nicely. The workbench will be on casters so I'll fit those now as it will make it easier to move around and work on. I'm using these leveling casters as they can hold a lot of weight. I use the same ones on my welding table, I really like them and if you need any I'll put a link in the description. I'm putting four on now but I have ordered two more for the centre that I'll put on afterwards. This is a long bench and it's sure to sag a little in the middle even though it's pretty heavy duty steel tube that I've used on the frame. Now that the casters are fitted, I can see whether it'll fit into the grinding room. I did work it out before starting the project, but I knew it was going to be very tight. Next I'll paint it, but first I'll clean it down with some turps to remove any oil or dirt. I also decided to add a shelf support across the larger open section of the base. I'm keeping the theme going with my other workbenches, painting the frame with blue hammer finish and the panels with charcoal. Even though I made plans before starting, I've changed a few things as I've gone and I've just added more shelf supports off camera and I've also made the changes to the plans. Next I'll cut and I'll fit the shelves. I need to cut away a slight bevel to clear the weld bead at the base of the legs. To fix them down I'm using self drilling metal screws. These can be a bit hit and miss depending on the quality so sometimes I pre-drill them anyway. The workbench doesn't need to be enclosed but I've decided to and hopefully keep out as much grinding dust as possible. So next I'll cut the panels for the sides and the backs. I probably would have used 12mm plywood for this but as I already have some 9mm I'll use that instead and it should be fine. I'll finish them with a couple of coats of charcoal hammer finish, but first I'll give them a couple of coats of undercoat.
While they're drying, I'll make the central back panel. I've decided to make it out of steel as this one will be exposed to the most amount of sparks. I reckon I'm going over the top though and don't think it's necessary at all as the guards on the saw catch most of the sparks. But anyway, that's what I've decided to do. All of these panels will get fixed with the screws going into the edge of the shelves. At the top I'll screw a strip of plywood to the inside of the frame and then screw the panel to that. Because the panel is made from thinner steel, it's not deep enough to cover the round over corners of the legs, so I took it off and fitted a plywood panel first. The side panels are offset slightly to the inside edge of the frame so I glued two pieces of plywood together to allow for that. The workbench will get extremely grimy over time so I thought it was worth sealing the plywood with one coat of water based varnish. I also sealed around the side and back panels to try and limit the amount of dust getting into the cabinet. That's the frame and cabinet done so next I'll start working on the bench tops. I've got this old reclaimed plywood that's extremely good quality. It's solid and flat with no voids. It does have this vinyl glue to it which limits what it's useful for, but for this purpose it's perfect. I'll remove the vinyl and I'll use the plywood glue side down. You can see here that I've already fitted the middle top piece. I probably should have welded rails from front to back to support it and I've added those to the plans but this plywood really is excellent and it should be fine spanning that distance. The plywood needs covering with steel plate. I'm using 1.6mm thick steel and I'll cut the pieces in much the same way as I cut the plywood. A piece of one inch angle is the perfect offset from the edge of the saw to the blade and I can use that to help set a guide.
I'll use contact adhesive to glue the steel down, but first I'll give the old plywood a sand to leave a clean surface for the glue to stick to, and I'll also clean down the steel with acetone to remove any grime. Next I need to trim down a couple of pieces of flat bar for the side pieces of the recess. To finish the top off, I'll edge it with 25mm flat bar. I fitted the end pieces first and then I measured, made and fitted the front and back pieces afterwards. There was the odd gap here and there so I put some cork into those just to finish it off. Now I'll fit the saw and as I mentioned earlier that will sit on a piece of steel plate. The reason for that is so I can rotate the saw to make mitre cuts. I'll make three brackets that will get welded to the plate and I'll use those to bolt the saw to. The saw and base will pivot on a bolt, so next I need to drill a hole in the base for that. I'm drilling it directly below the nearest fence position, so when the saw is rotated, the fence stays where it is. I'm not being super precise, and it doesn't actually need rotating at that point, but I thought it would work well if the fence stays somewhat close to the same position.
I'll make a handle to weld a nut to so I don't have to find a wrench when I need to set the saw, although that wouldn't be too bad as it's not something that I need to do that often. While the paint's drying, I'll put some protection on the workbench to prevent rusting. Um, for that, I'm using Shield T9, which works amazing for this. And I've started using it a lot in my workshop on tools, on my welding table and machine surfaces. It really is coming together, it just needs some doors and the doors are just 19mm plywood but I did make sure to find some flat pieces. I've made the handles off camera and I made those out of 30mm angle. I was originally going to make the handles the full height of the door but I've changed my mind and made them shorter so now I need to add a small strip of plywood on the edge. To fix the hinges I'll drill and tap threads into the frame and I'm trying out this M3 tap drill for the first time. I bought a set of them a while ago just for a few dollars and didn't think there'd be much use but it did all 24 holes I needed here, no worries at all and it was still working just as well on the last one. After fitting them, I took them all back off to finish painting them before putting them all back on again. The very last thing to do is add some catches and I didn't use magnetic ones because I don't want them to attract the grinding dust. And to mount the catches to the cabinet, I glued a piece of wood at the back of the frame. The doors don't line up perfectly with each other at the bottom, but they're good enough for a workbench. I've got this old sign that was on a workbench shelf that I bought and I'll use it to mount behind the saw to protect the wall from sparks. I was going to mount it with the back facing out, but I decided I quite like the numbers showing. It's all done, so it's ready to put into the grinding room. I need to set up some roller support outside for when I bring in long pieces of steel and I may make a roller for the windowsill as well at the correct height. And now that I have steel bench tops I can use a switchable magnet as a stop. I put a piece of aluminium between the stop and the workpiece and then remove it to prevent the workpiece from kicking back. I may add an adjustable support or even use a second magnet behind the workpiece to stop this as an alternative method. 
I mentioned earlier that it may sag in the middle being such a long workbench and it does by a couple of millimeters but when I add those extra casters that should sort that out. I'm really happy with how it turned out and I reckon it will be a great addition to the workshop. I've never really had a good setup for cutting steel to length and this should really help out. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I'm not sure if I'll get another video done before Christmas, but I'll try. If I don't, I'll wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.